Well hello scrappers and welcome back to my channel. It's been a little while since I did my video on how I depopulate boards in my kiln. That video is kind of aged now. Um, I'll show you how I do it these days, at least with small boards. I've got a basket, stainless steel basket here, full of small boards. Uh, these are like uh, from hard drives, CD-ROM drives, I don't know, maybe from a printer, all kinds of little boards. Here's a Here's a little um, PC expansion board. Now all these boards have already been through the Eco Gold X gold stripping solution and they have already had all of the gold taken off of them. So the gold fingers have already been taken off, the pins on the headers are taken off, the pins the, on the connectors. All the gold has already been stripped from these things. I like to do that first before I depopulate the boards because a lot of times what happens in the kiln here, um, the plastic will melt and sometimes run over the gold parts. Uh, sometimes solder will run across the gold parts and sort of trap it inside. So what I want to do is get that gold first before I go after what's left, which is basically the IC chips and other components on the board, which also have a lot of gold in them. So. So how this is going to work is I'm going to put this in my kiln here and we're going to heat the kiln up to about 425 degrees Fahrenheit. I've got a temperature controller over here that's ready to go. It's got a preset program in it. It's going to ramp the temperature of the kiln up to about 425 over the period of about an hour and a half, slowly. And then what's going to happen is once the kiln gets up to temperature, uh, I'll have this basket inside and I'll just reach in with gloved hands and just shake the crud out of it every once in a while and you know we'll be above the tempered melting point of solder parts will just fall off the board you know almost all the parts and all these boards will just fall off you know I've got some uh, the memory sticks down there too all kinds of stuff and all the parts will just fall off the boards there'll be a few stubborn ones I might have to grab with pliers and pull them out while they're hot but most everything will fall off so that's how I do it with small boards with big boards I just sort of uh, stack them in the kiln sort of like house of cards type and uh, let the kiln heat up and then just reach in with gloved hands and pliers and shake them or bang them and all again all the parts fall off works really well with surface mount parts through hole parts a lot of them will come off but sometimes you just gotta grab them with the pliers and pull them out and uh, you know I'll, I'll get a stubborn board with a lot of, of through hole parts on it and I'll just hold it with one gloved hand and pull the parts out with the pliers and then throw the board down once it's empty so Anyway, we'll get this in and we'll get it going. I'll give you a look in the kiln because this is, I don't know how many runs I've done lately. My kilns were were dead for a long time because I didn't have power out here in the workshop. But I got power again, so I'm running through my backlog of boards. So there's been a lot of runs through the kiln lately. I'll give you a look inside here. I don't know how well it's showing up. It's dark in there. But, uh... There's a catch basin down there, a terracotta uh, a bowl catch basin, and uh, it's caught a lot of stuff on the last few runs. Some of it has missed the catch basin and made it to the bottom of the kiln, but uh, after I'm done depopulating boards in here, I'll pull the catch basin out and get all the stuff out of it, and I'll probably vacuum out the bottom of the kiln with my shop vac, one of my little shop vacs, and get all the stuff that's down there too. And there's a there's an Aaron IC right there. Okay, so let me get this thing started. And I have videos about how I sort out all, all of the bits and pieces that wind up in the catch basin in the bottom of the kiln. I'll put a link in the upper right hand corner to that. Okay, so let's get started. I will uh, close the lid, not quite all the way. Give it a little bit of a gap so that the smoke can come out because there will be a bit of smoke and we'll start this thing up and we're cooking so in about an hour and a half we'll be up to temperature come back be ready to start shaking it and uh, getting parts off the board all right well it's been about an hour and a half and i don't know if that's showing up but we are up to temperature, 425 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's only just come up to temperature. Now the reason I have the slow ramp up 
is so that the stuff in the middle of the pack of, of boards has a chance to get warm too. Otherwise, only the stuff on the outside will be hot. But uh, even so, since we're just up to temperature now, a lot of the stuff in the middle probably isn't all that hot yet. There's also a gradient in here. So the stuff at the bottom isn't going to be as hot as the stuff at the top. So this is going to take a little while. We'll give it its first shake though. I'm going to get my gloves on. I've got just a regular leather glove on this hand, but this hand, getting the big Kevlar glove on because I'm going to have to hold up the, the handle on the basket and it's really, really hot. So even with the Kevlar on, it'll soak through in a little while. All right. So we'll give it its first shake. I can see some stuff is loose. It's going to come off. Stuff at the top. Stuff at the outside. And then as boards clean up, I'll tend to pull them out and throw them down. That board's clean. Nothing on it. Some of the plastic starts melting, unfortunately. But that board's clean. That ram stick's clean. That board's clean except for some melted plastic. Give her another shake. See, a lot of stuff has fallen off of these boards, but some of the through hole stuff is sticking. I can hold the board with this glove and just pull the through hole stuff out. That may actually need a little more time. That board needs a little more time. Okay. Well, we'll let them cook a little while longer and shake them some more in a bit. They've only just come up to temp. So, more stuff will come off next time. And I'll have a big pile of boards down here on the ground to clean up later that have all had their stuff cleaned off of them. Okay, it's been a little bit longer, so let's see what else has reach the melting point of solder and it's ready to come off oh well, there's a lot of parts flying around in there you gotta be not too aggressive when you're shaking it otherwise you know your stuff will go flying okay. There's a couple chips on here I can pull off. Some transistors. And there's nothing left but some resistors and diodes on that board. It's just the through hole stuff you have to do this on. And these IBM boards, they use some good solder. They don't want to come apart. And got some metal can transistors here. And some plastic transistors. I'll just take them all. Oh, that's hot. I'm about slaving over a hot oven. It's nothing working at the kiln. I have to be careful when I reach in here not to burn my wrist. I have done before. There's a big blob of molten plastic. Got a couple IC chips embedded in it. I'll have to pull them out. Blank board. Blank board. Blank board. Nope. Blank board. That one's blank, that one's gonna go back in. Alright. Another little shake. And as the boards bang against each other, they knock stuff off of each other. They'll knock the chips and stuff off of each other as I shake them. So starting to get a pile of uh of empty boards down here. So we'll just let that cook a little while longer and come back and do it again. And it's been a little while longer, and here we go again. It can be 
kind of fiddly with all these little boards. It takes a long time. Oops, I got a little over aggressive. Something went flying over there. I'll have to find it. It's probably valuable. Let's see. It's blank board. Blank board. That's not blank yet. That's blank board. Every once in a while I'll get some boards with some really, really resistant parts where the solder just doesn't want to melt at these temperatures and I don't really want to ramp up the temperature any higher because stuff will start burning. So what I'll generally have to do is either take a torch or a heat gun to get the last few parts off of some of these boards. That's got a few parts left on it. That's just a connector. And remember, all these connectors have had their uh, gold plating, ooh, that's hot in there, removed with the Eco Gold X Gold Stripper. So, ooh. They can just be disposed of. Okay. Another shake. And naturally there's some stuff that's falling into the uh, catch basin. Whoops. It's the rubber off of my uh, pliers. I think it's shot anyway. Anyway, there's some parts that are falling into the catch basin. They're either coming up out of the basket and falling into the catch basin, or they're just going through the holes and falling into the catch basin. Some of it's missing the catch basin and going into the bottom of the kiln. I'll get that with a vacuum cleaner probably tomorrow afternoon when everything's nice and cool. This is going to be the last load I'm going to do for a while, so I'll be able to clean out the kiln. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there. So anyway, I'm just going to keep this up until I get all the chips off of those boards that I can. And most of the boards are down here on the ground in a pile, ready to be taken care of. And down here on the deck, here's a pile of fully depopulated boards growing. I've got almost all the boards depopulated. There's just a few stubborn ones still in there. Going to get a little bit more heat treatment. Any that uh, still have IC chips on them that I think are worth salvaging and haven't come off, I will uh, take a heat gun or a uh, torch to and grab, grab them. And then uh, this load will be done. Then it'll be time to clean out the kiln and sort out all the bits. And like I said before, I have a video on sorting out the bits. Um, you know, there's IC chips, there's oscillators, there's tantalum capacitors. There's all kinds of stuff you got to be in the bottom of the kiln that came off of these boards. And some of it you want to save and sort out. So uh, definitely check out the video on sorting the bits. Okay, so I dumped out the contents of the basket after giving it, you know, letting it sit for a little while, giving one last shake. Um, I got four boards up here that still have a few little IC chips on them. That's it. I got some blank boards over here. This is all the stuff that stayed in the basket. Uh, there's a lot of big IC chips in here. There's a lot of connectors. Uh, oh, that's a that's a metal can transistor with a big heat sink on it. And uh, various odds and ends. I'll have to sort through this. I have videos on sorting. Um, and then I've got to get all the stuff that is in the catch basin in the kiln and on the bottom of the kiln. I will probably vacuum that out tomorrow afternoon when it's cooled down. And I will probably have two or three times this much stuff to sort through. So, uh, yeah, the depopulating the kiln works pretty darn well. Okay, it's the next day, and here is the catch basin from out of the kiln. And also, I've scraped up a lot of the stuff on the bottom of the kiln and dumped it in the catch basin, too. Um, so, there's a lot of stuff here that obviously fell out of the top of the basket when I was shaking it and wound up in the catch basin, and a lot of really small... IC chips and other components that so just went through the um, the holes in the grid work of the of the basket I was using. So this needs to be sorted through, you know, oscillators, crystals, lots of IC chips. You know, sort them all out into their individual bins, 
and uh, get to processing the stuff for his precious metals. Uh, there's a lot of IC chips here, a lot of small ones, and bigger ones over there in that in that basin where I dumped the basket out. So we'll just uh, set aside the IC chips and start processing them for their uh, their gold. So okay, so that's that's how I do uh, the uh, depopulating of boards, at least the small boards. Like I say, with larger boards, it's a little different. Maybe I'll make another video sometime when I'm doing large boards. But uh, yeah, so that's how I do the small boards. So anyway, that's how I do that. So if you found this video at all interesting, enlightening, educational, whatever, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and subscribe to my second channel, Electro Geek 64 where I have all my electronics and retro computing projects. If you're at all interested in that stuff, or you're wondering where the updates on the Teletech System Master, the ET3400 are, and my other electronic projects, they're over there at Electric Geek 64 So check that out and subscribe there too. And press the little bell icon in both places that YouTube makes you press to be notified when new videos come out. And thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video.